Hello, my name is Lori Rubin, and we'll be looking at fixing exposure problems in a raw file. Fixing images that are underexposed, too dark, or overexposed, too light, or both, can be a real challenge. In this video, we will be looking at two different images with two different exposure issues. One will be processed on a Mac with Luminar, fixing exposure on an image that is overall too dark. The other image will be processed on a PC with Luminar with the challenge of correcting subjects that are shot into the sun so that they are too dark against a lighter sky. After opening a raw image, if we go over to the filters catalog, you'll notice raw develop is available. If you open a different type of file format, such as JPEG, TIFF, or PSD, the name will say develop. For our first image, I will be demonstrating on a Mac with an underexposed image. This means that the exposure is not correctly adjusted, and now we cannot see the details in the rocks, and the overall image is just too dark. We will work on fixing this image to recover the details and turn it into a decent looking sunset. As you can see by the different sliders that are available, you can do a lot of processing with just this filter. In this video, we will be focusing on the Raw Develop Adjust tab. For more information on lens and transform options, we have videos available on the Skylum.com website under the Video Galleries section. We recommend that you shoot RAW so that you can get the most information from your images. Plus, you'll have the different white balance settings available to you in Luminar. Depending on your light source, the color temperature in your image might need some adjusting. There are six different options. If you want to make your image warmer, for example, try selecting Cloudy. You can also manually adjust the color temperature or tint by moving the sliders. Notice that the sliders indicate the colors you are adjusting. Moving the temperature slider to the right, this will warm up your image, while moving the slider to the left will cool it down with blue tones. Reset the temperature slider by double clicking on it. There is even an eyedropper tool that you can hover over your image until you find a neutral gray and then just click on it. Here's a tip. At any time, you can reset all of your changes by clicking on the reset icon under the clarity slider. So feel free to experiment and play around until you get the results that you're looking for. Since this image is too dark overall, I want to make some adjustments so that the entire image is brighter. You can choose the exposure slider and move it to the right. Notice the sky gets blown out and it's just too bright. If I move the slider to the left, everything gets too dark. So there's another way to fix this image with the raw develop filter. Let's look at this section and start out by selectively adjusting for the highlights and shadows. Since this image is so dark, I don't need to bring my highlights down. But if you have an image that is very bright, you'll want to move the highlight slider to the left so that you can retain some of the detail in the lighter areas of your image. We do, however, want to bring up the details in the shadows, so simply move the shadow slider all the way to the right. Next, we'll look at the whites and black slider. What we want to do with these sliders is to adjust the brightest whites and the darkest blacks in the image so that we don't lose detail in our image. There are a couple ways of turning on the clipping warnings, which will show you when you've gone too far. In the histogram panel, click on the left triangle and then move your black slider all the way to the left. The blue areas show the darkest black areas where you will lose the detail. Bring the black slider to the right so that only a little bit of the blue is showing. Now, click on the right triangle and move your highlight slider all the way to the right. I like to set the white so that the red just disappears. So if I went to print this image, the whites would have some tone in them instead of having the white of the paper showing through. Another way to see the clipping is to hold down the Option key for the Mac or Alt key for PC, and then move either the white slider or the black slider. Notice that when the screen will turn white or black, instead of showing you the actual image when you use the triangles in the histogram panel. Don't forget to take a look at before and after so you can see the changes from your original image. Hold down the visibility icon to see before and let go to see after. Or you can choose the compare button, which will show you a split screen of before and after. After you have made your adjustments in the raw develop filter, now is the time to add additional filters if you'd like to further enhance your image. How about bringing out some colors in the sunset? 
Choose Add Filters and then let's use the Brilliance Warmth Filter to add richness to the colors with the Vividness slider. And then we can warm up the sunset by moving the Warmth slider to the right. One of the reasons why we started out with the Raw Develop Filter is that if the image was too bright, the color would get washed out, too dark, and the colors would increase. Again, don't forget to look at what your filter is doing by clicking on and off the visibility icon on the filter itself. We've come a long way from the dark image that we started with by using the raw develop filter and enhancing the colors with the Brilliance Warmth filter. Here is another image, and this time we'll work on it using Luminar on a PC. As you can see, I shot this raw image looking towards the sun, which makes the foreground elements too dark. We will correct this by going into the raw develop filter and use the tips that we have learned in the previous image. First, click on the Add Filters button to open the filters catalog. Locate the raw develop filter under the Essentials section, or you can type in the name into the search field at the top. With the Adjust tab selected, let's start out by adjusting the highlights and shadows. Again, we will skip the exposure slider for this image since it will either blow out the highlights or crush the blacks. I want to retain as much detail in my clouds as possible, so moving the highlight slider to the left will fix this. To bring out all the details in the dark areas, I'll move the shadow slider to the right. It's starting to look much better, but we are going to adjust the whites and blacks to make sure we get the best tonal range in this image. Click both the triangles this time in the histogram so that we can see any clipping. Move the white slider to the right until you see red appear. Now slowly move it to the left so that most, if not all, of the red disappears. With the black slider, move it to the left so the blue appears and then slowly move it to the right so most of the blue disappears. You can add clarity to your image if you want to increase local contrast. But in this image, I'm going to use another filter to selectively pop the colors in the balloons. This time, let's choose the HSL filter. This is located under the Professional section of the Filters catalog, or you can type HSL in the search field. This is a great filter if you want to change the hue, saturation, or luminance of a specific color. I want to increase the brightness of the yellows and oranges of the balloon. To do this, simply choose the Luminance tab and move the orange and yellow sliders all the way to the right. Again, to check what the HSL filter has done, click the Visibility icon in the HSL filter. Notice that some of the yellows have affected some of the other yellows in the image. If you want to affect just the yellow balloon, choose the Masking Brush. Make sure that the paint is selected, and in this case, we want the full effect, so opacity is set to 100%. Start painting on the yellow balloon. Notice that now just our main balloon is lit up. We might even want to paint in some of the yellow in the other balloon. Now that you know how to use the raw develop filter, try it on your own images to bring back to life those over or underexposed images.